know now that you didn't know at 18? What do I know now that I didn't know at 18? Wow. Um, that I control every interaction with every human being that I'm with. That, that a person isn't just an asshole or a person isn't crazy or, uh, you know, if I'm aware, I can actually manage any situation with 98% of the people on earth. There's, there's some lunatics. Yeah. But, <laughs> there's some lunatics that you just can't do nothing with them. Uh, but for the most part, you play a part in every aspect of your life, going the way you want or not going the way that you want. Right, that's well, we will, a lot of right. actors uh, stay away from their franchises after they reach a certain point, and you yeah. can very support What do you mean by a certain point, man? <laughs> <laughs> Usually, once you become a really old man, it's not making a young man. <laughs> and once you get Oscars yeah, and yeah, serious yeah. movies, you've stood mm -hmm. by Men in Black, Bad yeah, Boys, yeah, yeah. you've been willing to revisit Independence Day, yeah, yeah. it worked out, so uh, what is it about the franchises that you skipped by? Them? You know, um... The greatest experience I've ever had in a movie theater was Star Wars. Um, it, it shaped how I look at the world. You know, my imagination was so small before I went in that movie theater, and there was an explosion that I had. I just couldn't figure out how someone came up with that, and then how could they make me feel like that, or watching it. So for me, there's nothing more valuable to me than how people feel in a movie theater about a movie, right? So even more, more than awards, like, it's just, that's never been important to me. It's a small, that's what a small group of people think. For me, it's like the maximum amount of people that can have an experience that will give them some little germ of something to think about or talk about is all that's important to me in, in making movies. So I like big movies. And the thing, the adjustment I'm making in my career right now is the clarity of what we're saying with the movie. Like there has to be an idea, there has to be some uh, message or some statement. You know, for me, it, with Men in Black 3, we, we connected to the destructive nature of secrets, right? Mm -hmm. And that idea, whether you get that or not, when you look at it and think about it, that's what we're displaying and then how a relationship can get uh, repaired and go to another level through the exposure uh, of a secret. Are you, I, I, Robot 2 and, and Bad Boys 2, are you using the same criteria and are they happening? It was a third. Yeah, the, everybody, there, there's, you know, I'm, I'm open to it, so all of those producers are looking and trying to make it happen. I, I'd be surprised if all of those movies happen, but, but you know. Uh, Bad Boys Three has a really solid idea behind it, behind it right now. So, um, you know, who knows with that? And for the for the for the most part, I'm just looking for material that that resonates. And um, I love the I love the idea, and why I love science fiction so much is you can sit. But the, I think the closest I've ever been is I Am Legend, where you can sit a performance and a serious idea at, at the center, and then you have the blockbuster rapping uh, all around it. So like just that that's my flavor. That's where I like to play. I like that big landscape. Well, how did you break the ice with Tommy initially? Because I'm just curious. You know, I just kissed him. Tommy kissed him. <laughs> Tommy kissed him. He responds well to that. You should try it when he comes in. <laughs> now, you know, here's the th it's like, Tom Tommy Lee Jones is hilarious, right? Like, Tommy Lee Jones, what I would say, <laughs> if I, I would say most, like, if you, if you look at, you know, at, at the body of his work, the most, the character he's most like is the uh, fugitive, right? That's how he talks and jokes. I don't care. You know what I mean? It's like, like that. The, that that is the, the 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 type of energy that he has. I think that you guys see him in a place where he's like least comfortable. 
should know, but Tommy is hilarious, you know. He's right there in all of the jokes, right there playing around and everything. And um, You ever crack him up? Uh, yeah, but it just looks different than you crack him up. <laughs> you know, Tommy, when you, when you hit a really, really big joke where you've scored, Tommy goes, hmm. <laughs> 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 but you know that's a big score for Tommy. That's a belly laugh. <laughs> 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 you know, we missed you on screen. Did you miss the acting when you're doing other things? Yeah, you know, it's... I, I love, you know, especially I'm producing my kids, you right. know, yeah. and my wife's TV show and all that. So I've, I'm, I'm loving uh, doing that. I think that's my most natural space in the business. I would have to say, if I just fell into what was most natural for me, it would be producing or editing. Like, that's just, I, I just love, and that's where, that's where I thrive. Um, you know, but, for, I mean, for me, it's three years off camera, and I just had to get back to work. Because Jaden, like, he really wants to make movies badly. Just at the dinner table, he got a little bit of a predatory look in his eyes. <laughs> he is so coming for me. He is so coming. I tell him all the time, son, I'm going to teach you everything that I know. And if you work hard, you can be the second biggest movie star in the world. <laughs> Well, as you develop a Karate Kid sequel for him, do you take any inspiration from the first Karate Kid sequel, the old rival, Sato? Yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at that. We're, we're probably, uh, you know, not, no time in the next couple of years going back to that. He has ideas and things. He's very specific about what <laughs> what he wants to do. <laughs> uh, you know, in Karate Kid, he, he's, he's just getting beat up all of the time and we're working together now you know, on a movie called After Earth, and it's like post-apocalyptic, and he's crying. He's like, he's like, I want to make a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, please let me make something funny. Well, you mentioned um, uh, filming in Costa Rica yeah. for After Earth, and mm -hmm. I just feel like there's a really special connection with your Latino audience, mm -hmm. whether it's here in the U.S. or Spain or right. whatever it is. What do you think it's about you that they really connect with? And also, I know that you've learned Spanish, which we really appreciate. Uh, un poquito, necesito practicar más. Uh, <laughs> hablo, un hablo un poquito, pero no entiendo mucho. Es muy difícil para mí oír las palabras. Yeah, you know what 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 happened uh, about, probably about twenty years ago um, when we started the Fresh Prince. There were there were a true of uh, Latin American actors that translated the the Fresh Prince, right? But what they did is they didn't just <coughs> translate it directly. They translated and adjusted some of the jokes that didn't work. They would adjust them for a Latin American <coughs> audience. So the the Fresh Prince of Bel Air became huge in in Latin American countries and in in Spain. And when you know, I, I went to Mexico City and uh, El Principe, El Principe, and I had no idea that that it was that successful. You know, and I just I I just felt so honored by that. Then I started taking Spanish, and you know, I just I, I wanted to be able to communicate back how that made me feel. And how is filming in Costa Rica right now? Oh, that was great. We finally we finished up a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay. Costa Rica is gorgeous. There's some bugs in Costa Rica that they don't have other places. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I know you mentioned, uh, you were talking a bit about Jaden, and I know um, I was watching you on Oprah, and you were telling us about how important it was for you to impart to him that he will not break. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been asking a lot about failure, and mm -hmm. your, ch your kids are both in, in the industry and, yeah. and doing very, very well. Mm -hmm. What do you teach them about failure particularly and how you handle your own failures and, and about that, that breaking place? Well, first and foremost is that the, the idea of failure is a label, right? It has no bearing on what actually happened. You know, what actually happened can turn out to be the best thing that ever happened to you if you decide that it's the best thing that ever happened to you. So for me, the, 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 the big thing with my kids is you have to control how you label things because they're going, that's, they're going to become what you say it is. 
You know, so it's it's very important to me that they understand the power that they have to create the lives that they want. Like, uh, you know, Willow, for example, we didn't flack for <laughs> letting Willow cut her hair. And I just don't, it's so obvious to me that you have a little girl. How, how can you teach her that you're in control of her body, right? If I teach her that I'm in charge of whether or not she can touch her hair, she's going to replace me with some other man when she goes out in the world. She, now, she can't cut my hair. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's her hair. She has got to have command of her body. You know, so to me, there, there's things like that. So when she goes out into the world, she's going out with a command that is hers, and nobody, you can't just touch her body if she doesn't want you to touch it, because she's used to it being hers, and she's used to making that decision for herself. So, so to me, it's, it's more about um, lumping the responsibility on them for their lives as much weight as they can hold without breaking, as many decisions as they can make without breaking, that's what we try to keep giving them until they can hold the full weight of their lives.